What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to day three of my week in Hustler. Halfway through the week, I have survived so far and today's game is going to be fun. It's a 2550. Probably straddles will be on, but it won't be as big as the last videos or yesterday's video because, uh, you know, it's hard to top $1,600 straddles constantly. That was an absurdly big game. Uh, today should be a little bit more tame for the most part. Uh, smaller at least. I'll be a little more comfortable playing 2550, 100 than 400, 800, whatever the hell we were playing yesterday. So uh, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. I've survived so far. I've survived two days, which is great. Just trying to survive today. Going to mix it up. Obviously going to play some big pots because that's what's going to happen when we play on this Hustle live stream. And hopefully have the best of it. I'm trying to make a good trip. So that's all I got halfway through the week. And today's gonna be another big fun day. Thanks for tuning in real time. Appreciate everyone that, that uh, tunes in and tries to watch some punts because that's obviously going to happen naturally as I play poker. And um, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see, you, I'll see you guys on the felt, get some chips, and uh, let's get the cards in the air. Coming off from my biggest win of my entire life ever, this next day, I start off with a $50,000 buy-in here at Hustler and my third day on livestream. Let's get into it with the first big hand of the night. I pick up ace-queen offsuit on the button with a $100 straddle on. There's a plus one player who raises to $300 and then an early position three bet of $1,500. This player who just sat down as well, I'm unfamiliar with both players and I'm on the button and I'm not sure what to do in this spot. I think a $1,500 three bet is pretty darn big. But ace-queen off is a pretty good hand, so instead of 4-betting or doing anything, I decided to just make the call, which allows the plus-1 player to come along with a call as well. So now, going to a flop of ace-9-6 to spades, early position checks, the 3-better bets out $2,000, and this is a pretty good flop for my hand. I'm happy to continue with a call here, of course, and when the plus-1 player overcalls, it seems really likely in my head that he might have a draw, and... You know, most obvious draw would be the flush draw one. So hoping to not see a spade. The turn is the king of spades. Just ew. Action surprisingly checks to me. And I think I'm just going to slow down here multi-way. I think the plus one player can have spade draws. I think the three better can have a really good premium hand like ace king that beats me or pocket kings. So with just one pair, I check back and see the river brick three of clubs. Once again, action checks it over to me, and it seems pretty hard to get called by worse hands here if I did bet for value. Mainly, I'd be betting to target ace-jack and ace-10, basically. Seems hard to get value. I just decided to check this one back, and I see Tall has exactly one of those hands I would have gotten value from, ace-jack. Unfortunately there, I still think the check is the right play, although results-wise, obviously, I would have made a good chunk of money if I bet this river. Too bad, at least I still win the first hand, so not too much to complain about. If you guys have been following along BetMGM's online championships like I have, you know that they just wrapped up their events and will be announcing their winners pretty soon. This was the biggest series in BetMGM history, and that included over $2 million in guaranteed prizes. If you missed out, don't worry, BetMGM has cash games for every player every stake, and that's No Limit Hold'em, PLO, 25 cent, 50 cent, all the way up to the high stakes cash games that you love watching me battle in. The best part is that they're available 24 seven online anytime you want. So follow the links down below to lock up your seat and maybe you'll see me in the BetMGM street soon. Stay tuned, got some exciting things planned. Moving on to the next hand, I'm in the $200 straddle and action fold around to Mars in the big blind. He raises it up to $500 and I see a very playable king 10 of spades. Seems okay to three bet sometimes, but here I'm happy to just make the call in position. And we see a flop of king six deuce to clubs. Pretty nice flop for me, and when Mars continues for a big bet of $700. Seems pretty large given the size of the pots, and I'm sitting with top pair. It's an easy decision. I make the call. Going to a turn, which comes a board pairing deuce. It's a card that doesn't change anything here, and I see Mars bet again. It's a chunky sizing of 1800 And again here, like I said, I have an easy decision. It's top pair. I'm going to have to make the call with a good hand. If he has a better king, then so be it. Sometimes I could be beat, but we're off to a river, which comes an inconsequential 9 
basically doesn't change anything unless this player has pocket nines. But when Mars decides to slow down on this river and checks, it makes me feel a lot comfortable and a lot better about my hand. And now I think it's time to bet for value. But the issue is I don't know if I'm targeting a king to make the call for value. So to be honest, I just feel like Mars has a lot of air here, just a whole lot of nothing. And, you know, maybe I can try to induce a bluff raise. I bet small, about 20% pots of $1,200. And upon this small bet, Mars thinks about it for a while and actually ends up check raising. He raises the $6,000. The plan all along was to make the call and win, hopefully more. So I do stick in a call pretty quickly and he's reluctant to show. So I'm happy to show the top pair. Expect that he was bluffing, I guess. And this is nice to have everything go my way this hand. I just had easy decisions all along calling with top pair. And I guess I'm glad that I got some extra money on the river. My small bet induced a raise from him. About an hour or so goes by. I'm pretty car dead. But until here, I pick up pocket fours, the best hand in poker. I'm in the hijack and I raise it up to $300 here and Eli on my left. He's a pretty tough and tricky opponent. He ends up three betting to 1200 Four xing my raise action fold around to me. We're playing plenty deep and you know, pocket fours is a premium. It's the best hand in poker. I make the call and hopefully hit something big. The flop comes 884 Bank City pocket fours is basically the nuts. How sick is this in a three bet pot? I start off with a check, but sadly, my opponent does not put in money. He checks back and going to a turn, which comes an ace of hearts. This looks like a pretty darn good card for me, mainly hoping that he connected on this ace big time. So I check once again over to the three better and good thing he does bet out money. He bets out $700 and let's go. Time to bump it up in this spot sitting with the full house pocket fours here i'm loving life and i decided to check raise pretty big to 3000 hoping to get called by ace king ace queen maybe even ace jack that would be pretty nice right anyways eli doesn't fold which is awesome he actually grabs more chips and he actually three bets to 7700 I would like to say that this is a dream, but there are some thoughts crippling in right now into my mind that there's a chance that I might lose to pocket aces right now, but if that was the case, then that would be such an insane cooler. Anyways, I call here as I think re-raising this would seem like a little bit too much. So let's go to a river out of position. The river comes a 10, basically a total brick. I don't see Eli playing pocket tens this way ever. So I check it over to him, hoping he blasts out with value or a bluff. I think end of the day, I might not be able to raise if he does bet out, but Eli ends up checking. Ah, uh, darn. We can see that he had nothing on screen, and I think this is why I think Eli is a really tough opponent to play against. Having bluffs like this and having the wherewithal to be able to even check back on this river... Props to my opponent for not barreling the river because I think that's something I wouldn't be able to do in this spot. But I just like to say, pocket fours never fails. All right, following that hand, I pick up a fun looking one, ace eight offsuit in the cutoff. The hijack to my right raises it up to $300 and I've seen this opponent be pretty passive so far and not playing too many hands. So I think I can apply some pressure on this opponent and this hand would rather three bet anyways than a call. So I three bet to $1,000. Action folds around to my opponent and he defends. So we go to a flop of king high with two clubs and overall, I just think this flop should favor me more. Anyways, this opponent checks it over to me and I bet small, $650, about a third size of the pot. And when my opponent makes the call, I'm really not loving life here. Definitely have some alarm bells going off, but we're going off to a turn which comes the queen of spades. Two flush draws now, and as much as this turn card should be favoring me a lot, I see this opponent having a king a lot of the time here, so action's just going to go check, check, until the river ace of spades arrives. Now, sitting with top pair, the backdoor flush draw did get there, and the board is a lot more connected, but when my opponent checks for a third time, I'm thinking there might be some merit to betting thin for value here. Certainly does seem pretty thin as I would only get called by a king sometimes and I'm just targeting king jack, king 10, king 9. It's ambitious, but I think it's worth some merit. So I bet out a small bet of $1,000 and 
As you can see, this sadly is not going to work out my way as he has a flush. Steiner check raises me and makes it bigger and I can't imagine he's bluffing here. I'm sitting with one pair, it's a bad bluff catcher. So I just let it go. Nice hand to my opponent who had it. Not a whole lot of hands happens on stream. I get a little card dead, but I do end up up $20,000. And you know what happens after the stream, we're playing post stream and let's get into the hands. This hand recorded just a little bit late. So apologies off the bat here, you might be staring at my hand for a little bit, but let's get into the action with queen jack off suit on the button. This is the very first hand after the stream. The early position opens it up to $400. Player to my right makes the call and queen jack on the button. Let's make the call as well and see a flop, small blind and big blind and shadow letter call. So we're going like 11 ways to the flop here, which comes queen nine four rainbow. Action checks all the way around to me and this is a pretty cool spot to be in. Definitely trying to thin out the field. I don't wanna go 11 ways to a turn, so I make it $700. Player to my left, Eli, he check raises to 2,000. And when action folds to me now, I can finally start recording. Just got my phone. This player just lost a relatively big pot at the end of the stream. So, you know, he's certainly tricky and I'm happy to be in here. I make the call. The turn doesn't come and change the board at all. And my opponent continues and fires out for 3,200. Okay, I have a pretty questionable holding right now. Just one pair. It's not the strongest queen. And yeah, like I kind of blocked some of the bluffs that he could have. But uh, I don't know. Not believing him, happy to stick it in with just one pair right now. Not feeling super comfortable, let's be honest here, but let's continue. I make the call for 3200. The river is a board pairing nine. All things considered, this is a pretty good card as it eliminates combinations of pocket nines that I lose to. And when he fires out for a third time of 7200, <sighs> all righty $7,300 it's a big bet this pot has clearly ballooned up this might be one of the bigger pots I've played today and I am going to be in here I stick in a call if my opponent has it kudos to you and he shows me four or five off suits and that's a great way to start off the first hand after the stream nice to win a pretty darn big pot unfortunately this hand literally happened right off stream so you guys never was able to see it on YouTube but now you do I'm happy to report it and I get a pile of chips pushed my way. In the following hand, I pick up king nine of spades in the small blind. The cutoff raises it up to $300, and when the button folds, I think when we're playing shorthanded, I just got to get involved early and often, and here, when I'm out of position, I decided to raise this one, put this one in the three bet to $1,400. My opponent makes the call. He's actually the owner of the Hustler Live Casino, Ryan. He blessed us with his appearance after the stream has ended, so let's battle it out against the Hustler live stream owner. We're off to a flop, which comes queen, jack, 10, two diamonds, bink, bink, bink. How often do you play king nine and flop a straight? Not very often, I think. So sitting on this beautiful board, I decided to bet out $1,200. And for my $1,200 bet, he actually comes along and calls. So action is brewing. Turn comes the eight of hearts. It's basically a brick. It doesn't change a whole lot. Although I guess a nine does make a straight, but you know, I already have the straight basically. I size up here again for $4,300. And to my surprise, he continues with a call. Oh man, this is music to my ears. We're going to the river now, which comes the eight of diamonds. Oh, that's not the best card. Board is paired. The flush got there. What do I beat? What do I get value from? It doesn't seem like it, I get value from a whole lot. So I check it over to him. Maybe seeing he can check back. Maybe he wants to fire a small bet with a hand like Queen Jack. Who knows? But sadly, he uh, he does not check. And he fires out 8500 Oh, $8,500. All right. I have a pretty strong hand. Good bluff catcher. But that's really all my hand is now at this point. So I don't know. This kind of feels horrible, but I can't fold. I toss in the chips for a call and he shows me pocket jacks. Oof. Nice hand to you, sir. Ryan Feldman. I guess I paid my dues. I paid my seat for being able to play on this live stream for the full week. And he came to collect. So that's why I came and played. 
just rivering the full house. That's going to be tough to beat. And there we are chipping down a little bit in a pretty big pot. Even though I lost a pretty big hand, it doesn't stop me from the next hand. I pick up ace, jack of clubs on the button. The cutoff opens up the action by raising to $300. And I think my hand can serve either way as a call or raise. And this time I decided to call the small one and big blind all call as well. So four ways to a flop of jack, 10, five rainbow. Action checks the cutoff player who bets out $400. And here I am. I'm not folding with top pair, top kicker. I'm multi-way here as well. So I make the call and then interesting action. So the small blind player actually decides to check raise to 1400 Uh Okay. Weird spots and even weirder. The cutoff actually calls the $1,000 more. All right, are you ever in a spot where you just want to fold top pair, top kicker? I mean, this might be one of them. It feels so wrong to fold this spot. So for that reason, it, because it feels wrong, uh, it feels like a sin to really fold this. I, I decided to call again for, for $1,000 more. Weird spot, but multi-way to a turn we go, which comes the eight of spades. Brings in a backdoor flush draw, and what's even more surprising is that action checks to me. Uh, Queen nine gets there for a straight, but that's about it. it. I think it's another weird spot, so I decided to not put money in the middle because I don't know what's going on, to be honest with you. I checked this one back. The river comes the deuce of hearts, and... This is a brick card. The small blind now does like a stop and go thing and he bets out 1200. And when the player to my right cutoff makes the folds, I guess I call given I have a really great price. I have the best one pair kind of. So I do toss in a chip as a call. He says he has a jack and I win. Guess my ace kicker is going to beat any one pair of jacks. Maybe at King Jack, maybe at Queen Jack. And I guess that eight was a pretty wet turn. Killed a little bit of action, but here we are, souping in chips, rebounding from that cooler hand. For one of the last interesting hands of the night, this one, strap in, because it gets absolutely crazy. There, we're in the big blind with deuce three of diamonds and the player to my left straddled to 200. So I decided to limp the $200 for 100 more and this player checks. Going to a flop, which comes six, four, five, two diamonds. Wow, flopping the straight along with the open-ended straight flush draw. Uh, what more can you ask for when you play deuce three, right? I start off with a check and this player bets out 300 and I'm gonna try to pump as much money as I possibly can into the middle here. So yeah, I check raise to $1,100 after this bet and my opponent makes the call. So this pot is brewing. The turn comes a six and you know, board's paired, I lose to full houses, but I can always get a straight flush, right? Doesn't matter a whole lot. I decided to bet out $1,000 and my opponent jams. Goes all in for about 4,700 total. And I think this is basically just a non-decision for me here. Uh, I just snap it off. I make the call for about $3,700 more and I see some bad news. Oh my God, he has seven three of clubs. He actually flopped a straight himself a little bit higher. I guess now I'm rooting for diamonds here and we are off to a river, which does not improve me sadly. Wow, what a sick cooler. How often do you see two hands like this collide against each other? Seven three and deuce three flopping a straight and another cooler. I lose this one, I chip down, but that's when it's time to call it a night. GG's, what a session this was. Look who I found. We're playing tomorrow. Anyways, hello. Stream ended up going fine. And here's the outro, I'm pulling up my phone to go over the numbers, but ultimately uh, we played for maybe another hour off, off stream, played some big pots that I'm sure I included some of them. And this guy ended up coming to LA because we're on the stream tomorrow. So yeah. we're in for max pain tomorrow, maybe. I don't know. I've survived three out of the four days here at Hustler. One left, which will be tomorrow against this gentleman who might put me in some dicey situations. Anyways, today I was in the game for $125,000. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. This is still a lot. Five, five. 2550. Oh, Mainly man. because Nick wanted to cover me so much. So I added on more money because then he was auto going to add more money. So whatever. Okay. In for a lot in this 20 by 50, 100 game. Uh, sometimes the 200 straddle was on. Out of the game for 157,750 for a profit of 32,750. Holy shit. Uh, 
Yeah, a lot. Nice. I'm kind of pulling Mariano numbers right now. You said you won a little, you asshole. I'm not gonna say how much I won to like to random people. I don't know. I won a little, but it was a good. <laughs> it was a good day. That's I've survived three days so far. I have made an incredible amount of money. I'm. I am now unstuck from the WSOP after three days of playing cash. How stupid is that? And. Hopefully things continue to go well. Just have to survive playing with this guy. Hopefully I don't get stuck all because of an actual really good player at the table. <laughs> and thanks so much for watching. It's been a really fun journey so far. One last day. I'm not celebrating anything yet because one last day at Hustler could actually ruin everything. But who knows? We'll see how big the game is tomorrow. Wish me some luck. Wish this guy some luck because he's going to need it. Uh -huh. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.